What is up guys? Welcome back to another reaction and today we're watching five ways British and American yards slash gardens are very different. So in our last reaction where we compared US versus UK houses, one of the things that was talked about in that video was the size difference in our yard. Y'all seen our yard like over on the Anna and JT channel? Go check it out. Link in the description. You know that we live on 10 acres. Our front yard is massive. We basically took a field that had cows and horses in it and just put a house in there. So like we just live in the middle of a field and a lot of y'all have been like, dude, that is so crazy. Like your yard is like 10 times the size of the average UK yard. And like our yard is big, but like around here, especially in like Kentucky and stuff, a lot of people have large yards and you know, it's just because America is so big, you know? So it got me interested. So we're actually gonna check out some real differences in US versus UK yards. The first one being some of y'all call them gardens. Like a garden to us is like just a place you grow plants, you know, like you grow vegetables and stuff. Like we just started a garden over on the Anna and JT channel and it's strictly for growing vegetables and stuff like that. So we're about to get into it. You're going to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Drop a like for more reactions like this. Y'all are going to see a lot more videos from me across all the channels. So y'all just stick back, stay tuned, and let's get into it. Sprinklers, I suppose, are pretty essential and I can tell you from experience on a hot summer's day, if you're walking down the street and one of them accidentally goes off and you, it can be quite a pleasant experience. And Dude, I wish we had automatic sprinklers. I'm trying to grow grass right now. Again, we moved into a field. And grass needs a lot of dang water. So I'm out there like 45 minutes twice a day just using the water hose to water it myself. It's bad. Unless you're carrying your phone. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. So without further ado, here are those ways that British and American yards are very different. Here we go. The ambiance. I love that sound. The truth is, on a warm summer's day, you really can't beat the quiet, relaxing ambiance of either country's yards. But think sure. back to summer, think back to your childhood. What is the overriding sound? It could be dogs barking or a builder putting down a mug. But in my experience, <laughs> if you strip away all of that, the most consistent sound in both countries comes from things with wings. Across sure. much of Britain, the winged creature in question is a wood pigeon. They basically, they hang out in people's gardens. That's what they do. And they make this noise that you don't really hear very often in the United States. And that noise is this. I, I know we have pigeons, but I don't think I've ever seen a pigeon. <laughs> I've never seen a pigeon in real life, I don't think. At least around like my house and stuff. We do get a lot of birds. We get a lot of cardinals, a lot of blue jays. But the number one bird, and like they're one of like the most terrifying birds, are buzzards. Dude, they, they will fly around our house all day, every day. Like it's a, our, Charlie, our small dog, we have to watch her when she goes outside. Because if they wanted to, they could just swoop down, pick her up, and carry her off into the distance. She'll be gone forever. And we also get a lot of hawks, a lot of owls, especially like back here in the woods, you know? Literally one just flew past. Literally, I swear, two of them, two of them. They're everywhere, bro. They're absolutely everywhere. <laughs> Sorry to the wood pigeon community for that. And while we certainly have types of pigeons in the United States, this large bugger isn't one of them. Look at him. He's already had three courses. He's going in for his second dessert. Greedy bastard. On the other hand, I guess I guess it's like different types of pigeons because we do get pigeons here. I think they're smaller though. I don't think they're that big. Of the soundtrack to American Yards, there's only one creature that comes to mind: Chainsaw Jim from next door, but also crickets. Now we talked about the not just crickets, not just crickets. We have a pond. If you haven't seen, we have a pond like pretty much in our front yard, and um, it's that time of year. Last night was the first night we actually like truly, truly heard them. Frogs, dude, dude. They're so loud and there's going to be thousands of them. It's bad. It is literally deafening. At night, it is deafening. They are so stinking loud, it's crazy. These excitable creatures before on Lost in the Pond, so I won't be propagating their sinful activities any further. But suffice to say, that recognizable sound, so that was a B. That yeah, that was, that was, was very amazing. prevalent throughout Midwestern summers. In Britain, the same is true of these. Ooh, clotheslines. To air its dirty laundry in public, Britain has no problem doing just that with clothes straight out of the washing machine. Now, there are some drawbacks to doing this. Number one, the pegs can help deteriorate the fabric. And number two, it takes flipping ages, but on the plus side... It does. It, but if you get a good windy day, dude, you could get laundry done like that. 
Growing up, we always had a clothesline because it was always cheaper, you know? Just to save on money, you know? Running the dryer multiple times a day, it's gonna add up. And then sometimes we didn't even have a dryer, so we had to hang clothes. And uh, Kentucky weather, it's not your friend. It's, it's definitely not. So sometimes we would have to do laundry. We wouldn't have a dryer and it'd be raining outside like it is right now. So throughout the house, we would have clothes on hangers hung up just randomly, like in the sh on the shower. You know, like the curtain rod for the shower? Dude, that was a makeshift clothesline more often than not. So yeah, I'm no stranger to clotheslines. It's eco-friendly. You close I also used to hit my sister with a mean clothesline. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's flapping the wind in a really pleasing way. And they end up smelling like Britain. But after moving to America... They do. They do. Your clothes smell like outside. Like they're clean, but they smell like outside. If you know what outside smells like, you, you, you know what I'm talking I'm about. I'm surprised to find a distinct lack of washing lines in people's yards. And that makes it sound like I've been snooping. But the truth is, I have... Now, of course, there will be Americans watching this going, we have a clothesline, because all Americans sound like Kermit the Frog for some reason. Or, we had a clothesline in the 70s, or whatever. Right, there are exceptions. And there are a couple of good reasons for this. Firstly, the United States doesn't do the whole, let's have a washer and dryer in one combined unit. Thing, yeah. They just have really effective dryers. And the second reason is that in parts of the United States, homeowners associations have actually moved to ban it, citing them as... That is true. I didn't even think about that. We don't have HOAs out here. But yeah, I could see where they would... You couldn't put one up in your yard, which is stupid. Like, dude, it's just literally a line you put clothes on come on now so it definitely depends on where you are in the u.s but like around here they're everywhere like we plan on putting one up in our yard so eyesores that could devalue the property however a few years ago several states did pass right to dry laws which specifically forbid oh. associations placing ban on clotheslines but even with a sharper gaze on the environmental benefits america still ain't got nothing on Britain. Of course, yeah. if my neighbors are so reluctant to see my socks and my underpants and that mysterious Princess Leia bikini, perhaps they should consider the size of this. Hey, I will say, I know a lot of Brits use clotheslines, but I, I know a certain group of people that would give y'all a run for your money, and that is the Amish. The Amish, they literally have to use clotheslines. They have, dude, we live a lot, we live around a lot of Amish. I've seen some of the most like unique and like extravagant clotheslines ever. Like they'll be like off the roof of their house, down to the fence, up to the barn. Like it's ridiculous. And they will like, dude, it's lined with clothes. It's so crazy. They have like pulley systems and everything. It's wild. So yeah, the Amish, dude, they are clotheslined in. <laughs> Fencing. Firstly, let me clarify, if you're confused and you think the word fencing is used here to indicate that British people use their gardens for sword fighting, you're wrong. That's <laughs> I wish. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> that'd be cool. It was phased <laughs> out in the 90s. Fencing as in the protective perimeter around your yard. And in Britain, front yards don't so much as have a fence, but often a brick wall and a gate. These walls huh. can range in height from half a Danny DeVito to an entire Danny DeVito. It's also not uncommon in Britain for both the front and the backyard to be surrounded by a hedge. Where you might see a fence, usually that of the wooden variety, is in the back garden. And this is yeah. often replicated in the United States. But the it, they're, like, they're called privacy fences. And they're like super common in like neighborhoods and stuff like that. But out here where I'm at, out here in the country, the only fences you're going to see are animal fences for like cows and all that good stuff, you know? There are a couple of areas within the world of fences that America does things differently. Firstly, I was kind of thrown aback by the vast amount of front yards that don't have anything not a fence not a hedge not an army of gnomes and on the one hand yeah. i like this because it seems quite inviting but on the other it does encourage people to trespass onto chainsaw jim's yard what chainsaw jim really needs is a white picket fence something that's famously common to the united sure. states see usually you're just going to put up a no trespassing sign and again this is america so like people know People have guns, you know, so usually you try not to trespass, but... But one area where fencing tends to be more prevalent is the American backyard. And while this can indeed include wooden fences, there's one type of fence you'll see here that is not common in Britain. Chain link. And I oh, understand yeah. that most Americans probably don't give these fences a second thought. But to me, they're amazing. And one of these days I'm going to install one so tall I can use my garden to have a steel cage match. Yeah, those, those are common if you don't have... 
the privacy fence. Like, if of the chain links can be a lot cheaper and if you just want something like to keep your animals in the yard or something like that then yeah you're going chain link but if you have the money and you want like a privacy fence that's like over six foot tall then that's what you would go with you know sprinklers when i entered my first spring here in the united states one thing that really stood out to me was the prevalence of sprinklers people stick them out of their front lawns and we don't do this in the uk because our sprinklers are placed in the clouds but because sure. of a midwestern climate that doesn't really lend itself to effective lawn care sprinklers i suppose are pretty essential and i can tell you from experience on a hot summer's day if you're walking down the street and one of them accidentally goes off on you it can be quite a pleasant experience yeah we like it rains a lot but also when it's dry it's freaking dry you know like it gets so hot it could rain for a week straight and then like in three days with just the sun out everything's gonna be crusty again you know it's gonna be super dry and you're gonna need especially if you're trying to keep your yard like nice you're gonna have to water it even though it, you just got six inches of rain three days ago that sun it just gets so hot it dries it out quick unless you're carrying your phone Size. once again if you've been watching my videos for any length of time you'll know that there are two constants my confused expression and the fact that my videos always come back to size and yards are absolutely no different let me tell you a story when i was approximately one danny devito tall i like any child used to play in my garden by britain's standards this garden was of relatively average size so whenever my rich friend from the village over invited me around to his i couldn't believe that his garden was so big that his dad had built him a miniature railway by britain's standards oh, this could have been the garden of a millionaire or not because after moving to the united states i realized that no this is that's the size of everyone's garden here in that yeah. childhood garden i was banned from playing soccer because you're only ever five feet away from the kitchen window however at my in-laws house in indiana i don't think i could have hit the window if i tried and i did try <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were so, the country itself is so much larger, and there's so much more space, like, to have a big yard. But I have lived in, like, neighborhoods and stuff where we have, compared to yards in the UK, they're still large. But a smaller, more condensed, you know, front and backyard. I've lived in houses where we don't even have a front yard, we just have a backyard. But even then, they're small, but they're kind of big compared to the British ones. Now, before we finish, a quick rapid fire of miscellaneous items. Hanging flower baskets, which country does them more? Britain. Gnomes. Garden gnomes. Britain again, although you do find them in the US, according to my Twitter feed. You do. You do. Barbecue pits, definitely America. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't remember seeing one of those at all. What about fire pits? Like, not just a barbecue pit, a fire pit. Like, a fire ring. How common are those in the UK? Because, like, dang, dang near everybody around here has one. Like, our next project is to build, like, a whole fire pit and, like, fireplace in our yard. I know those are super common here, so y'all let me know. In Britain, we do have barbecues, but it's we don't have the pit often. I don't think anyway. I never had one. Why didn't I have one? Mom? Dad? bugs i'm not sure that either country has more bugs than the other they just have different types midwestern gardens will get way more mosquitoes fireflies things like that britain you'll see more slugs and snails than you do here Who hey, has we, more we definitely get them though and flies flies are so bad around here maybe it's because we moved into a a horse field flies get so bad in ladybugs actually i don't even think they're ladybugs i think they're called like Japanese beetles or something like they almost look like a ladybug but they're not ladybugs and they I don't care how sealed up your house is they're going to get in they're like ants they're gonna find a dang way they're everywhere they're absolutely everywhere or flowers in their garden again this might come down to the type rather than the quantity but the, having said that I think British gardens can be perceived to be m more flowery because their gardens are smaller so they have to pack more in British yeah country's gardens are more likely to have a pond I don't no, the answer to that question is lost in one. That's it for this. <laughs> well, we have one. It's not super common, and not everybody has a pond. You know, we just we moved into a field that needed a pond to water cows and horses, and now we have it. So <laughs> it's more of a puddle, but we do plan on getting it dug down and actually turn it into a pond with fish in it and stuff. So could you imagine, like, somebody in the UK that had like a smaller, like, backyard garden like that? 
and they just dug the whole thing down and turned it into a pond. That'd be sick. <laughs> but all right, guys, that is going to do it for five ways British and American gardens, yards, are very different. I think everything, it always comes back to size. You know, we just have so much more room, so there's they're going to be bigger. You can put more stuff in them. But also, you got to think about it, the maintenance. Dude, mowing the yard. Like, I haven't mowed this yard yet. Again, I'm trying to grow the grass to mow it. I, I should just not grow it so that way we don't have grass to mow. But, <laughs> but I have a riding lawnmower. Like, I can get up and get some grass mowed, you know. But to mow my front yard, probably going to take like 45 minutes to an hour. Like, it's going to be dang near half a day's job to mow all of the grass around my house. But in the UK, dude, you could use a push mower and be done in 15 minutes. So, like... Hey. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, drop a like. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you go out today. Spread love, spread kindness. Do something nice to my day. I love you guys so much. I really do. Shit, you're excellent. I'm out. Peace.